Hi everyone, this is Elise. I'm with Counseling Care Circle. Welcome back to the uh, discussion series on increasing accessibility for AAPI. Hopefully these conversations are helpful to you and also for other minority groups who may be tuning, tuning in. Um, this is my friend Jessica and she does amazing work in market research. So good to have you here. Thank you, happy to be here. Thank you. So um, would love to hear from you, you know, if you could do a little introduction of yourself and what you do, what your field is. Yeah, so I am a marketing director for a nonprofit that's called Women in Research, uh, and we serve the market research and insights community, um, just working on providing different resources for women in the industry who are kind of looking to build up to leadership roles um, and, and bolstering any kind of gender or wage gaps that are present at this time in the industry. Um, we've been around for over 12 years, I think now at this point, uh, we have all these kind of free resources that are specifically helpful to women. Um, so we have a mentor program, we have a global scholarship fund, um, we have over 12,000 members worldwide. We do these global networking events in I think like 30 different markets. Um, so really just finding as many opportunities to sort of bolster women as they are entering into this industry so that they can really progress um, in their careers in a positive way. That's amazing. I love it. You know, um, you said a lot of exciting things there. For those that are listening, um, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about what is marketing and within marketing, what is market research? Yeah, so market research is funny because it's everywhere, but nobody really knows about it. <laughs> um, it's essentially the measuring side of marketing. So a lot of people see the creative side of marketing. Um, market research is it's sort of the measuring side. It's about um, looking at different population segments, um, seeing how people feel about certain products and being able to measure that. Um, because we're often in this industry dealing with uh, different segments of the population, I think this industry is specifically very good at trying to be representative in its workforce uh, so that we can you know, really be doing a good job of having the people who are making decisions about the way that we market products um, to the populations that we're marketing to are coming from those same populations, having representation across the board. That makes a lot of sense, you know, just being able to speak the same language, recognize certain really tiny cues, kind of like nonverbal language, right, of what certain colors mean to, to different cultures and yeah. um, people groups and even like regions of the same country could, you know, people could have different meanings to, to different things. So um, I'm really interested in hearing more, you know, about um, accessibility to your industry since market research as a whole, it, it, it tends to, it sounds like it tends to be more, um, progressive or aware um, of the value of diversity? Yeah, I mean, I think because we're, we get to see the numbers of why diversity matters and why it works, um, why there's like a business case for diversity, that's something that gets talked about a lot in the market research industry. Um, there's city being very good for the specific job that we're doing. Um, because of that, we do have these companies that are really progressive that really recognize how important it is to have a diverse workforce and to have a supported diverse workforce. Um, so I think there is a, a, a place for people of color to step into that industry and, and really find companies that are going to support them and, and value them for who they are and what they're bringing to the table. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I thought it was so cool when you were sharing with me earlier that um, you don't have to have a college degree. So like socioeconomically wise, it's um, an accessible field to work in. And um, there are some connections that your company is making with HBCUs, for people of color to enter the, the field as well, which is 
super cool. Um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, as the oldest um, nonprofit organization to be doing this kind of market research and seeing, you know, other smaller, newer nonprofits also emerge doing similar work, but more people of color oriented. I'm curious to see what are some of the things that you've seen over the years in terms of like, here are some like high points, things that um, your client organizations or the nonprofit world in general or the marketing world in general, I don't know, pick whatever you choose, um, has done really well with in growing and, and learning from. And then what are some areas that you would say are areas that could use some improvement for increasing accessibility to API, to internationals, um, to people of color? Um, yeah, I mean, especially as a nonprofit working with sponsors, things like that, seeing, um, I think companies really come to us with the value being there, um, you know, rather than coming to us and seeing like, how can this benefit me? They're really interested in investing in the actual mission behind what we do. Um, that is something that I've definitely seen grow in my, I've only been with us, our organization for three years, um, but, but, you know, seeing the increase in, in interest um, because, people know that there we are pushing something. There's momentum behind what we're doing and really wanting to join in on that has been um, pretty exciting. Uh, I think maybe the place um, where we could do better would be, um, we, I guess market research is also sort of colliding with a lot of different other industries that rely re really heavily on automation. Um, so we have a lot of UX folks kind of coming in um, AI, machine learning, and within those industries, they tend to be a little bit less gender diverse and a little bit less race, racially diverse. Um, so one thing that we've advocated for is, you know, because we've already given a lot of the companies in this industry the tools to be, be thinking about how you build a corporate culture, um, when you're bringing folks in from these other industries, you can hire diversely on that, on that industry too. So in that way, we're kind of like infusing out into these adjacent kind of like tech fields yeah. and, and hoping that that sticks. That's really cool. Yeah. Everything you're saying is so exciting. Oh, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to ask like 10 more questions, but <laughs> um, with each thing you're saying, it's just you know, really exciting. So it gets me thinking about like STEM programs and high schoolers and how are we educating and, and making those fields more accessible for, for little girls, like, you know, um, in school, K through 12. And then I'm also thinking about, um, are there, uh, you know, this kind of loops a little bit back to what you were sharing before that people are sometimes interested in like mentoring and you host events and, and things like that to raise awareness and bring people to the table to start doing their own work, right, as corporations. So it's exciting to hear, it's really good to hear that corporations are coming in and they wanna, they wanna do the right thing, they wanna be a part of it and they wanna um, be part of the future. You know, that those are really exciting things. Maybe we could take it to the more individual level of like K through 12 and through the lifespan. So whether you wanna talk more about like, helping kids, you know, enter and be prepared for these things or, um, and what you're, you know, what the industry is doing for towards that, mark, uh, partnering with education. Or um, if you want to talk more about um, individual adults that are already like wanting to start their careers and, and when they reach out and they want to um, loop into a, a network to feel supported about um, confidently moving forward in this career of choice. I'd love to hear about your thoughts on either of those or both of those, whatever you choose. Yeah, I mean, I will say that we mostly are working with people that are either already in the industry or are very new to the industry. There's a lot of organizations that are kind of in that K through 12 STEM sphere that are doing really important work. We're kind of on the other side of that. Um, but I will say that, you know, running a mentor program and running now, we we just started a new professional development program. Um, I think sometimes when you work in nonprofits, you get 
a little nervous about anecdotal success because you're like, is everyone else having as good a time as this one person? Has this helped, you know, as many people as this one person has? But, um, you know, we're, it's rare, I think, that you get to like have a room virtually full of the kinds of people that could be helping someone and be able to like directly tap them and like energize them into that. And I, I get to see that if not daily, weekly, um, just people coming into us with, um, you know, like pretty, I think almost normal stories at this time of like job loss, you know, extra extra caregiving, extra parenting, mm. um, and being like, is there even a space for me in this thing that I thought I wanted to do and being able to directly connect to them with someone who can who can get them you know at least their foot in the door um that's that's something we get to do we we do have like I said over 12,000 members at this time we're getting pretty big but internally there's really only like two um staff members and then we have this really big network of people who volunteer in some way being a mentor um running our events uh, instructing free professional development classes. So we have a really engaged core and we're able to like really connect people to that in a, in a really neat way that I don't think is common everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just beautiful. You know, everyone needs community. Everyone needs a place to fall back and just like be who they are and know that they can share their, que their questions, their curiosities. Um, share their successes too and, and be like, hey, this is something I'm working on. This is something I want to learn and, and know that they can talk with like-minded people. So that's really exciting. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what are some direct opportunities available in your industry to empower um, specifically AAPI in your industry? And I'm wondering this because um, sometimes um, you know, there's this phenomena for people of color, whether it's, it doesn't matter what, what, what color it is, but sometimes this thing comes up of internalized shame and internalized just like negative beliefs and things that just cut themselves down of, I, I might not be able to enter because of whatever. And, um, and so what are some direct like hands that kind of reach out, so to speak, metaphorically, from your industry to, to invite API in? That is a very good question. Um, I do think that there is an Asian marketing association. I, they're more generally marketing. Mm -hmm. um, as far as market research goes, we do have a few uh, kind of more uh, for people of color specifically groups we're really working with women and women of color. Um, so I think, I don't know personally for AAPI, um, mm -hmm. but I think even within our resource base, there's a lot of opportunities to plug in. Um, like I said, we have that mentor program, that's free. It's something anybody can sign up for and you can get connected with someone who's an expert in your field, you know, for a full year of a relationship. And, and that's pretty, um, I think, remarkable. You see a, a really big transformation point with that. Um, the, the professional development program, again, I would say that is, um, you know, like it, it's about building confidence. It's actually all of the content is sourced from women who have already kind of done this. They've already become leaders. And so they're really saying like, if I would have been, if I would have had known all I know now back and like what, what tools would I have handed myself? And so I think that's um, a pretty cool, uh, useful tool. Um, and then we do have that networking group specifically for women of color. So there's a lot of, of, of opportunity there to kind of connect and build some community if you don't have that in your current workspace. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Um, would it be something like, I think you shared with me casually outside of this interview that your organization um, has relationships with other groups 
that are more like people of color focused, if somebody was to reach out to your organization and say, hey, I at least know your organization's name, um, could you give me a referral to an organization that is similar to you guys, but just focuses on people of color? Um, would that be something that people could do to, to receive a referral? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so pretty much almost all of our major industry partners we have have a DNI initiative internally. I think the Insights Association is one of the bigger um, kind of industry associations that's doing, uh, they have like a mental health Monday and they do a black MRX chat. Um, so they, they have a lot of cool stuff going on and they're international. So that's like a, a pretty cool way to plug into a, a really broad audience. Mm. Um, there's a group that's US based, I think that's called Insights in Color. And they're actually um, pulling together a lot of different tools to help people hire diversely um, and kind of just like generally foster greater diversity in the industry. Um, there is a UK based group called Four. it's Color of Research. Mm. And they're kind of doing more like events um, and again, doing a lot of topics that are more generally on diversity. Um, all of these groups are headed by people of color in the industry too. So it's a really good way, again, to start networking with other people of color in the industry and, and building that community. That's beautiful. Yeah, it just sounds so friendly. I love it. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking for my next question, um, I'm wondering if there are, like I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. So, you know, when, when an industry or an organization is like super, just like so friendly anyways, it's not that, it's not like trying to get into some field where it's like known to be unfriendly and like known to be just like an uphill wall, you know, that you have to scale. Like when, when it's like that, sometimes like, like if, uh, if there's like a misunderstanding or like a, like a hurtful moment or something, um, people from various different cultures, they deal with communication a little differently, right? So um, say that someone's in your field, they're AAPI, and they're like, I got into this field because I was so excited about, you know, all the like positivity and progressiveness and I felt safe and da da da. But then I had this like weird incident. Um, how would you say that those kind of conversations are professionally handled within the field? Um, you don't have to speak to just your employer because I'm sure you've worked elsewhere as well. So like, you know, um, just like generally, how do people like in marketing kind of deal with those conversations? Because I think the hardest thing is when people can't talk about it, right? Whether it's because it feels like, oh, is it because, is there something about like my gender that has to do with this? Or is it because of um, my race? Or is it because of my accent? Or is it because of whatever, you know? I, I don't know, like the smell of my lunch that I brought from home or something. So like yeah. when these things come up, there's a million things that go through people's minds. The person who's saying it is like, who do I say it to? How do I say it? What if it comes back on me in some way? And then the people listening are like, oh no, am I approachable or not? <laughs> like, is it like, does, does this person see me as a safe person to talk with? And what is, you know, if, like it just sometimes makes people like a little bit afraid. So if there were any um, things like that, how do, how do people typically talk about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's definitely happening. You know, market research is not perfect. Um, nonprofits are not perfect. I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, those kinds of things are happening every day. Um, I think, I guess I would say that when we first started, and again, we're we're specifically, you know, working mostly with women. Um, we really just started as like women who all worked in LA. We had one chapter in LA, and they would just kind of meet up and and kind of talk about these different microaggressions and actually finally have 
someone who could validate that experience, you know, like from the perspective of like, I too have had a man talk down to me. Um, and that seed is what grew this, like the seed of, of having community to, to validate and, and like hold us through these um, kinds of, you know, like systemic things right they're they're not just happening in one industry it's it's everywhere in every facet of our lives um so so I think that's a really big part of what we do is like that support system but I do think that we also because we're working with companies as we have a high visibility we're creating uh, accountability on some level too you know so um so I I don't know. There's not a, a process behind that. I think it has more to do with our relationship to the companies that we work with. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of the twofold uh, of how how we're making an impact when it comes to those sorts of microaggressions and things like that. Yeah, you know, hearing that story, I think it's um, a really great encouraging story that you might not always know what's going to happen if you open up like that and be vulnerable, but also you can be hopeful that something really wonderful could come out of it. At minimum, somebody says, I hear you. And yeah. like, who knows, it could become an, the next or, you know, another, like another sister nonprofit organization that's similar to yours. You know, it could, who knows what it could become. So um, speaking up and, and sharing at least with some trusted people could be a good place to start. So that that's, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's a really beautiful history about your company in particular. So I think my last question in closing today's um, little interview is given that this was a um, project, a voluntary project that was um, motivated by um, just being in remembrance of those who were killed in Georgia last week. Um, I want to open the floor to you if you want to share any personal reflections or thoughts that you want to share as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think it's so hard because such a big pot of reasons why hate happens um and, and why why what happened happened and why it happens every day um you know I guess if we're speaking from the perspective of where we are it's like the pressure needs to come from the top too mm -hmm. um I think that a lot of times I know I exist in a, a great supportive community that is talking really vibrantly and having these you know great conversations about about what support looks like but that's not the case for everyone um and it's certainly you know a hard thing to talk about in uh in 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 our jobs when it affects our our livelihoods um but i think it's just as important to to put the pressure on at the top and and make um, these kinds of conversations and, 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 you know, really honestly supporting our communities, not for the sake of visibility or whatever, but like honestly supporting our communities and, and the people that we care about, um, you know, making that something that's a part of, we're, we're probably not going to solve capitalism in a day, but if we can create the spaces where we like care for each other in, in the little pockets of our day. Um, I think that is gonna have a really big impact. I hope it does. Mm, yeah, thank you. Jessica, it was so great to have some of your time this afternoon. Thank you so much for your thoughts and your um, eye-opening teachings about your, um, just, you know, inviting people into your industry and helping to make your industry more accessible and, and the, the greater nonprofit world at large more accessible for people who are already in it. So thank you so much for your time again. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, we will um, close our interview. Bye, everyone. <laughs>